Dad? Hello, my besties. Welcome back to another reading vlog. I haven't done a reading challenge type reading vlog in a minute. At least I don't think I have. Because I haven't done a challenge in so long, I decided for this week's reading vlog, I wanted to see how many books I could read in the span of 24 hours. This is not a 24 hour readathon. I attempted to do something like that, honestly pretty early in my YouTube journey and I hated it. I didn't enjoy it at all. I didn't have a good time. And I have a really, really hard time forcing myself to do things that I don't wanna do. So I most likely will never try to do that again. So instead, I am just trying to see how many books I can read in a total of 24 hours. So for the time that I'm reading, I'm gonna time myself when I'm not reading. I am not running the timer. We're gonna do that until we've hit 24 hours and then we'll see how many books I've gotten through. Will this be useful information to anyone? Absolutely not. But hopefully it'll be entertaining. I am also gonna cheat. Well, not really. I'm just going to be strategic about the way that I pick my books because I have to be honest. I am trying to get through my physical TBR right now. So I feel like this is turning into me reading as many books as possible over 24 hours. I would like it to be a high number. I would like to achieve that. All of that being said, I'm not gonna pick a 500 plus page book to read for this challenge. I feel like the average book is 200 to 400 pages anyway. So I'm just being strategic, okay? Call it cheating, call it using your brain. Like I've been saying, I do have a very, very hefty physical TBR, which is not normal for me. Normally I do not go crazy and buy a bunch of books at once because I know in my heart that will make me read those books less. I like to pick out one or two books at a time and have those. But recently, maybe there's something going on in astrology. My self-control has been slipping. So I have a lot of books that I need to get through. Here's the TBR card. I'm probably gonna do something from up here because this is where most of my shorter books are. Okay, I think I'm in between these two. I've picked out two thriller, horror, psychological thriller type books. I have either I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid or The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. This is looking pretty short. This is looking pretty like I could read this one pretty quickly. This is like right at 200 pages. I could read this or we could do this one, which I'm thinking this one's a pretty heavy read. I think I bought this because I saw it in a TikTok of someone saying it was like one of the hardest books they had to read or one of like the most traumatizing books they've ever had to read because apparently this is based on a true story about the kidnapping of this teen girl. This is right at 300 pages. I think I might start this one first and then depending on my mood from there, I might grab this one because I do kind of want to read this one now, but I feel like I should start off with an easy one or start off with one that will be a quick read that way I'm encouraged. So that way I'm feeling like I can actually do this. I don't really know a whole lot about what this is about. I do know that the movie or it was either a movie or a show came out on Netflix a couple of years ago and that's how I originally saw this. You know at the time I did not know it was based off of a book and I heard some things. I heard the movie was crazy and then I think this was also another TikTok buy and a bunch of people in the comments were saying oh I wish I could experience the ending or experience reading the end of this book for the first time again. So I get to do that. So yeah, I think we're gonna go with this. I'm gonna get my timer out. Does anyone else have this many alarms on their phone? Should we start it? Should we start it? It's officially been half an hour and I am 55 pages into this book. So that's like two pages a minute, right? I will say the font is quite big. So that probably helps me a little bit. I'm already intrigued. I will say that. This is one of those books where you know something happens. 
That's such a stupid thing to say. But it's one of those books where you know like something has happened and things are weird and you don't quite find out what all is going on until the very end. Which basically could be any book ever. But do you know what I'm trying to say? But yeah, right now they are still driving to this man's parents' house. And in between chapters, there will be like a page of, it's like a conversation between other people and they're kind of talking about this thing that had happened. You don't know who's having the conversation and you don't know what they're talking about. And so that has me confused. Like the first one, I still don't understand. How could something like this happen? We're all in shock. Nothing so horrible has ever happened around here. No, not like this. In all the years I've worked here, I would think not. I didn't sleep like, what are we talking about? Who are we? So, I'm really interested to find out what's going on. My goal is to finish this in about two hours. Will that happen? I don't know. But that's the goal for right now. So, I think I'm doing pretty good because this is the type of book that I would want to read very quickly. Everybody. it is the next day so it is day two of this challenge because i also want to keep track of how many days it takes me to hit 24 hours so day two i was so close to finishing this last night and i literally had to stop myself because i was getting scared i was getting scared and i didn't want to give myself nightmares that has like never happened to me before with a book but this is like the perfect amount of unsettling and creepy and it's not like obvious in your face scary no it's subtle it is like all of these little actions that out of context wouldn't be unsettling but because they all add up and build upon each other and come together that is what makes it so unsettling and that is honestly like one of my favorite feelings like a good unsettling vibe is one of my favorites. I stopped on page 178, so I have less than 30 pages left. I stopped at 134, so I've read a total of an hour and 35 minutes, and I am almost done with the first book. So I'm gonna start my timer again, and I'm gonna sit here, and I'm gonna finish this book, and hopefully there's a good ending, so we'll see. Okay, so now that I've taken a moment to ponder, to have a quick think on this, and also go look it up on TikTok, it is a tad bit later because like I said, I wanted to take a moment to think about this, to process this. I'm not disappointed by the ending, but I am slightly underwhelmed. By the way people hyped this up, I was expecting like the most insane ending to a book I've ever read. I guess it was just a little bit tamer than what I expected. It was still a good ending. It was an ending that fit the book. I still thought the book was really good. I just was expecting more. I'm just not like mind blown, you know? I still stand by everything I said before. Like all of those creepy little unsettling bits 
were so good like the tension and the suspense was an A plus and I have to say I think I almost enjoyed those little creepy unsettling moments more than the actual ending of the book I also still might not have fully thought this through and fully processed it this is also just the perfect book for a reread because once you know the ending once you find out what the whole is it changes the context of everything that you've read and you can almost read it from an entirely new perspective however we do not have time for that today we gotta keep it chugging we are one book in at 209 pages and that took me approximately one hour and 54 minutes now i need to pick out what to read next and i still want to stick with like kind of a shorter book and a lot of the shorter books i have over there are kind of like thriller weird creepy scary books i don't know if i'm still in the mood for that also it's raining if you can hear that okay Here's what I picked from the TBR cart. These all look like my kind of shorter-ish books. I have Such Pretty Flowers by K.L. Sarah. I'm still considering The Door Next... No. The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. Tampa by Alyssa Nutting. I really don't want to read this right now. And The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. But I don't know if this is the type of book I want to speed through. Like, I'm thinking I need to stick with shorter, fast-paced books. I think I'm going to go with The Girl Next Door. I've talked about this a couple of times, but this is apparently based on a true story of the kidnapping of a teen girl. And apparently she is kidnapped and held captive by the local neighborhood children? I don't know. I looked it up and apparently it is based off of Sylvia Likens. Yeah, I don't... I think this book is going to be a harder read. This case seems very graphic. I don't know if it's the type of book that I necessarily want to eat up. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to start it and if I decide that I can't do it then I will stop. I feel like when I first discovered like extreme horror or more graphic horror I was intrigued and I like wanted to read a bunch of them and I don't know I feel like I've read enough now that I'm just like why did I ever want to read that in the first place? Maybe the frontal lobes are more developed but my coffee and my 100 milligrams of Zoloft I'm gonna try and talk about this book um I'm not having a very good time to say the least this book is awful not the writing the writing's fine not paying attention to the writing but the content the content is awful and it's literally based off a true story so but I'm actually almost done with this I have probably around 30 pages left and I am right at I'm right at the five hour mark also side note I self tanned last night for the first time in years so I'm aware that I look like the peanut butter baby just to get that out of the way I've pretty much read this entire book without giving any updates because I don't want to talk about it and I also don't want to encourage anyone to go and read this book I know I did mention some things a little bit but this is based off of a true story which is what makes it so horrific this is based off of the case of a 16 year old girl named Sylvia Likens I have done some research on the real life case and I feel like there are not words to describe what happens to this little girl this 16 year old girl is held captive in a basement she is abused starved tortured 
sexually assaulted. Everything is done to this girl by a woman who is supposed to be her caregiver, her two sons, and a group of kids who live in the neighborhood. And I keep saying kids, but they're more like preteens. Like they're not young children who don't know better. They're preteens. I am not gonna go into the graphic details and the specifics of the action that happened to this girl. If you wanna go look the case up yourself, it's available. I don't recommend you do that, but I understand curiosity. Here I am talking about it. It's awful. I'm gonna warn you now. But to talk about the book specifically, I just don't really see the point of it. It's not told from Sylvia's point of view, which her name's not Sylvia in the book, but I also don't even know how you could even begin to try and tell the story from that point of view if you have never obviously gone through the things that this girl has gone through. But it's told from the point of view of one of the neighbor boys how he watches it all go down and how he never technically participates in the brutal things that are done to this girl but he still watches and he's sickly like is drawn to watching and how he gradually starts to see her as inhuman and i don't know i think if you want to read about things like this i just feel like it's better to read non-fiction accounts of these true life events um you know books written by professional journalists or reading the story from the victims themselves reading the stories in their own words i don't know i don't really see the point in choosing to fictionally retell this story there is an author's note in the back which i have not read yet so maybe that will kind of clarify things for me as you know as to why this author chose to retell this awful story but as of right now i am not quite behind this one I will tell you that. Right now I'm gonna finish this. Like I said, we're right at five hours and I have read about 500 pages or so, or I will once I have finished this. And then we will thankfully move on to something else. Don't recommend. a little bit later i have started our next read which is the daydreams by laura hankin i have read about 125 pages of this which has taken me to which has taken me to about seven hours so y'all i have severely underestimated how long it would actually take me to complete 24 hours of reading because I'm not even halfway there yet. Anywho, I picked this one out because I really just needed, I needed a change of pace. I needed something different from those last two books that I read. Also, no, the author's note of The Girl Next Door did not change my opinion, but I just needed something that was like a complete 180 from the doom and gloom that I was reading. But this is about the stars of an extremely popular, fictionalized, early 2000s teen TV show called The Daydreams. Think High School Musical, Hannah Montana, Victorious, like, like those shows and that level of fame. But it is now like 10-ish years later. They've all gone their separate ways. They're all doing different things with their lives and they have decided to do a live reunion. The thing is though, the original show ended in kind of a mess. We don't know completely what happened yet because this is dual timeline. We're getting like a story that takes place in like the early 2000s, but then also the timeline and the story that takes place current day. So both of the stories are like unfolding as you read. I'm explaining that like you don't understand what a dual timeline is. Sorry. So like I said, we don't know completely what happens yet, but what we do know is that one of the stars who was supposed to be like the innocent America's sweetheart type one, she has like a full blown Britney Spears style mental breakdown. And I put that in quotation marks because Britney's a victim. But yeah, that's the gist. Like I said, I'm 125 pages in. It's good. I don't really have anything overly positive to say about it, but I also don't have anything negative to say about it. You know, I'm not eating it up. I would say I'm more so just nibbling on it at this point. I'm gonna keep reading, hopefully get a good chunk of this done because I did just buy another book that I wanna start and I ordered another book that I also wanna get to when it gets here, so.
Hello everybody, it is now day even know how many days I've been doing this challenge for anymore but I have officially finished the daydreams this was 350 pages and this put me right at around nine and a half hours but this was good I really don't have anything negative to say about it I think this is definitely a likable book like I think majority of people who read this will like it especially if you like Taylor Jenkins read this just very much reminds me of a storyline that she would write I would say the timing of me reading this is such a coincidence because I also just watched that documentary that just came out about Dan Schneider and Nickelodeon and uh all those terrible things going on behind the scenes of all my favorite shows as a child. Um, and this is very much in the same vein as that. It's very much like childhood, teen, stardom, exploitation, betrayal, like the resentment and rivalries that build up between the kids. Loved the plot twist. As you can see, that one really got me. I will say, I'm not usually one to guess plot twists, um, so most of them do come as big surprises to me. But they're supposed to so if any of that sounds interesting to you then i definitely recommend this so that was our third book of this video i think i said that was like 350 pages so that puts us somewhere around 800 pages i think i don't know but what i think i'm gonna read next is a book that i actually just bought the other day from walmart i've said it once and i'll say it again the walmart book section is so slept on every single time i go to walmart I'm gonna look in the book section. But I stumbled across this one. This is The Girls We Sent Away by Megan Church. First of all, very beautiful cover. This is set in the 1960s North Carolina. Our main character, she has it all, an upstanding family, perfect boyfriend, an idyllic home complete with a white picket fence, but she wants to go to space. She looks through her father's telescope and wants to go to space. Me personally, I have no interest in that. Um, whenever someone talks about space, are they like, would you ever go to Mars? My answer is no. Will that opportunity ever be presented to me in reality? No. But you'll never see me in space. Space and the deep ocean. Two places you will never see me. So everything's perfect. Life is great. She has all of these dreams and then she gets pregnant. <laughs> Because of this, her parents end up sending her to a maternity home for wayward girls. But this is no safe haven. It's a house with dark secrets and suffocating rules. I thought this sounded quite interesting and I had never seen it before. I don't know if this is new, but I have not seen anyone talk about this. So yeah, I think we're gonna give her a go. This also was kind of giving me Ethel Kane vibes, you know, like 60s South, unwanted pregnancy. I don't changing my mind it's literally only been like 20 minutes and i have read 30 pages of this book and i'm just thinking that i want to be reading something else this is not a dnf um there's nothing wrong with this book i don't even think 30 pages is really enough to dnf a book this is more just kind of like i never even started it in the first place so it's just gonna go back on the tbr shelf and we'll start it at a later date like i'm still intrigued i'm still interested i still want to read it i just have other books that are calling to me right now so we're gonna pause rewind try this again. Now, I have actually currently also been reading Daisy Hates outside of this video. I had no intentions of making it part of this challenge. I was just kind of reading it, you know, when I wasn't reading books for this or I wasn't trying to time myself, etc. But I'm just finding that this is all that I want to be reading right now. Like this is the type of vibe that I want to read right now. So for all of you besties telling me that I needed to continue reading these books, here we are. I am technically already 100 pages into this, 100 out of like 410 something. So will I have technically read this entire book for this challenge? No, but 100 pages, not that much. So I'm gonna count it like normal. Initial thoughts of this, I do think I am liking it more than Magnolia Park. Like I'm definitely less annoyed with the characters. I do like these characters better, which is pretty much what I thought was gonna happen. And I don't know, I'm just, I'm having that same feeling where I don't know what it is about these books. But I'm just pulled in. I'm just sucked in a little bit. So we are going to continue our challenge with Miss Daisy Hates.
Yeah, Daisy just told Christian to get the f out of her room. And I have to stand. I wasn't sure how I was feeling about her. I think that sealed the deal for me. I'm a fan. You guys have all witnessed me enter my Magnolia Parks era. I did take a tiny break to take a shower, and yes, I did put the same exact clothes back on, but that is literally not the point right now. Everyone who told me, just keep reading, you're either a Magnolia girly or a Daisy girly, you were right. You were right. This has sealed the deal for me, especially the ending. Like, I am a Daisy girl. I never thought this would be me. I never thought that I would be into these books the way that I am right now. I also feel like this video has just completely deviated from the original goal. Like, yeah, I'm supposed to be reading for 24 hours, which I'm over it. Honestly, I'm over it. I really just think that any challenge involving the number 24, not for me. It's not, not for me. This feels too much like homework. I'm in the trenches right now. This is like book four of this. I think I'm like 14 hours in. Don't even ask how many pages I've read because I don't even care. Should I quit? I must persist. So yeah, I love, I love Daisy. I love the gang life, even if she doesn't. I would much rather listen or read about Daisy describing the make and model of every gun they use than Magnolia describing everyone's outfits. I'm sorry. I don't want to go back to that, honestly. Needless to say though, I'm gonna start the next book. I do kind of wish I could skip right to the next Daisy Hates book, but one, I don't have it yet, and two, I know I can't do that. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do that. I am hoping that this book allows me to understand BJ's actions because if you've watched my last couple of videos, I have made it clear that I am a certified BJ hater, and I wished that Magnolia would just beat his ass. So that's probably why I like Daisy Hates better. Also, if you're not a Magnolia Parks fan, don't worry. I am gonna try and speed through this because I do want to be done with this challenge. And this is not supposed to be a Magnolia Parks reading vlog, so. Losing the, losing the only girls I've ever loved? Shut the f up. I am flabbergasted right now. Right, I am 380 pages into this, so I'm well over halfway. And I am at... My time is gone. My 17 something hours that I know I had on here is gone. I'm this close. This close. Literally the only reason I was still doing this was because I was getting close enough 
to 24 hours. Yes, I know I could just pick up right where I left off. I could just time myself for seven hours, but at the end of it all, it's not gonna say 24 hours. Am I gonna confuse myself? I'm so mad at myself right now. Anyways, what I was going to say about this book, I wanted to give a quick little update before my day was just ruined. Clearly, there have been some revelations throughout this book. I will say that BJ is not forgiven. He's not forgiven. In my book, he's not forgiven. He's slightly more understood, but he's not forgiven. You know, other than that, they really just keep doing the same exact thing as the first book. They're just going back and forth. I'm getting whiplash at this point. And I am just scraping up the crumbs of the Daisy and Julian appearances. So I'm gonna see what kind of tampering I can do with these stupid timers. And then once I finish this, hopefully we will be on our last book or two of this stupid video. Jessa know how to write a cliffhanger because what was that regardless of how I felt about the majority of this book with the way that it ended I literally have to read the next one and it's not even technically the next one I was gonna read the next Daisy Hates regardless but now I have to read the next Magnolia it's kind of genius thinking on Miss Jessa Hastings part not only is the end of this book a cliffhanger but the snippet of the next one also a cliffhanger so. so it is the next day and yes i very much did get my timer back up to where i wanted it to be because again if i don't have that visual reward of hitting 24 hours i'm gonna be pissed so officially back up 18 hours and 13 minutes we have finished our fourth fifth book of this video i think and this was a total of like 520 pages so i feel like we're finally in the home stretch did i like absolutely love this book no do i feel like it was a lot of the same stuff as the first book i was getting whiplash going back and forth between these two but again with the way that it ended i simply have to keep reading it i will say i love the way the titles come out of these books like obviously this is called the long way home and just all throughout the book there were all of these little references to how their relationship and the long way home and there were all these metaphors about ships in the ocean and, and while reading this book you're still understanding things on the first cover of the first magnolia book so i love these covers if anything i love these covers daisy hates is coming in the mail i don't have it yet another goal of filming this video was to knock off some of the books on my physical tbr so what did i do I bought two new books to read instead. I think these are the next two that I'm gonna go for. I need something quick and fast paced to push me to the end, okay? Speaking of, I got the push. I did not do that on purpose. This is The Push by Ashley Audrain. This is a very popular thriller. I've kind of had it on my TBR for a while, but I've seen a bunch of people reading it recently. So I decided, why not to give it a shot? This is about Blythe Connor, who is determined that she will be the warm, comforting mother to her new baby Violet. That she herself will be the warm, comforting mother to her new baby Violet that she herself never had. So it's not her baby? But in the exhaustion of early motherhood, Blythe becomes convinced that something is wrong with her daughter. Or is it all in Blythe's head? The more her husband, Fox, dismisses her fears, the more Blythe begins to question her own sanity. So she's being gaslit. I've read another book kind of similar to this, where it's like a mom and a child, and she like, something's up with the child, but the husband doesn't believe her, so she goes crazy. And that angered me more, almost, than the psycho child. 
was the gaslighting husband. So I'm either going to go into this one next or I also finally got Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Late to the game on this one. This is the very popular one about a tennis star. She comes out of retirement. Not that big into tennis. I tried once during summer camp and I was bad at it. So because I wasn't immediately amazing at it, decided I hated it. I like Taylor Jenkins Reid. For some reason, this is giving me kind of summery vibes and I'm really wanting summer right now. I am ready for summer. Also, I'm very excited for that new movie with Zendaya. She is like a tennis star. I don't know. It just reminded me of this and inspired me to finally pick this up. This one's right around 300 pages and this one is right around 400 pages. So most likely these two books will take us to the end. why tell me why it's never the father it is always the mother being hated on being terrorized being gaslit why is it never the father should i write that should i write that book it is the next day so i've been reading quite a bit i am 174 pages into this and we have officially surpassed 20 hours we are now at 21 hours and 30 minutes thank god i'm a little over halfway through this and i will say it's been pretty all right so far the child sucks quite horrific um i wouldn't say it's been anything i haven't read before like yeah the kid is terrible the mother's being gaslit i've read it before even though i'm not done with it yet just based on other people's reactions to this book i would have thought that i'd be getting a whole lot more from this that i would be clutching my pearls and i'm simply not it's definitely a fast read i'm not not entertained we started out had no idea where we were who we were what was going on you're thrown right in and you have no idea whose perspective you're in what situation we're in the circumstances etc of course as you read you figure it out but we're also getting intergenerational timelines we're just getting a little bit of the past and three whole generations of women and how intergenerational trauma has affected our main character it's very much about the main characters like internal thoughts and internal struggles with motherhood on top of having a psycho child i'm hopefully going to finish this and then we will be very close to being done probably one more book to go we'll see I officially have one hour left in this challenge but before I get into that last hour let's talk about this I finished this last night it put me right at around 23 hours um was I the one being gaslit during this whole thing up until the last line of the whole book it was me I was the one being duped I did actually end up quite liking this it did grow on me more compared to the first update that i gave about this not only was i gaslit but again i keep getting duped by books like these i have picked up so many thrillers recently that my initial impression of them is that they're just going to be like a straight forward simple plot non-emotional thriller but i keep picking up these books thinking that's what they're going to be like and they end up making me emotional with this and 
the first day of spring. I also read this recently. I also loved this. Both of these ended up being much more emotional and kind of like introspective rather than super shocking or super thrilling. And I think I'm discovering that I actually kind of like that. These two books just remind me of one another. They're both about motherhood and troubled children and relationships between mothers and daughters. That like thriller plotline is almost like in the background, but I still found these both to be very good. And if you like one of these, then you'll probably like the other. Recommend. So like I said, I have one hour left of this challenge and obviously I cannot finish a book in an hour. Can I? No, but I think I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna start Carrie Soto is back for the last hour. Read for an hour. See how far I get into this. Probably, I'll probably get less than 100 pages into it, but, but then we'll be back when I have finally completed 24 hours of reading. And we'll also total everything up, do a little wrap up, okay? So I'm done. We're done. We're done here. My timer's gone. Again, I don't know why God is testing me, but apparently he thinks I need it because... So clearly we're done. I am literally only like 50, 53 pages into this and it's just too much tennis talk for me right now. Don't know what I expected. This is a book about tennis, but also I'm just in a bad mood. I'm in a bad mood now, so I'm just not in the place to be giving any opinions on anything. Because right now, I hate everything. But I'm ready to wrap this up, so. I honestly feel like I've lived so many lifetimes in this video. These books feel like they were forever ago. I think I read a total of six books over these 24 hours. We started with I'm Thinking of Ending Things and this book literally feels like I read it years ago. This was 209 pages. And then next I read The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum still thinking about the things that happened in this book. I will say that. 273 pages. I read The Daydreams by Laura Hankin. Honestly, back of the memory. Back of the men. Haven't thought about this. 350 pages. I think I read Daisy Hates in the Magnolia Park. So this, I started this 100 pages in. So this was like 300 pages. Five. Ooh. I just read the last page of this again and uh, saw that cliffhanger. This was 530 pages. This was 307 pages, 53 pages of this. So in 24 hours, I read 2,022 pages. Woohoo, yay. Which averages to about 84.25 pages a minute. Cool, great. Like I said, that information is useful to nobody. Out of these six books, I will say that I think Daisy Hates was my favorite, which again, unexpected. I don't know what it is about these books, but there's a little something in them. We're done. We're done. Did I say 84 pages a minute? That's simply not correct. It's 84 pages an hour. I think this really cemented for me the fact that 24 hour reading challenges are not my strong suit and I don't like to do things that I'm not good at, so probably won't do one of these again unless I want to make myself extremely unhappy. But thank you if you're still here at this point. Thank you for staying on this journey with me. I hope you had a good time because I didn't. Okay, let me stop being so negative. I don't like to watch people when all they do is complain and they're super negative and I'm being that person right now. So let me... This was an amazing video, you guys. I loved it. I had a great time. I hope you had a great time too. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you decide to stick around and I'll see you in the next one.